Okay, so Dima and Zane, mm -hmm. with user knowledge and search goals and information retrieval, a benchmark and study on the evolution of users' knowledge game. This is an abstract. Mm -hmm. uh, not the <laughs> so, hello everyone. My name is Dima and Zane. I'm a PhD candidate at the Université Côte d'Azur and the Laboratoire Citroën in France. I'm happy to be here. And I'm here to discuss with you a framework that will take into consideration the user knowledge and the user goals and personalize the, the results accordingly. Well, the reason why we are interested in this field is because both the user knowledge and the user search goals are considered as cognitive aspects. And those aspects are still considered major challenges in the information retrieval field. One other things that I would like to discuss with you and have your feedback about, and I'm basically here for that is about how to evaluate this framework because it has been challenging to evaluate this because there is there is no data set that contains information about the user knowledge or the evolution of the user knowledge during a search session so that was challenging but let me first start by uh, presenting what is the framework about how does it work and then we will move to the evaluation discussion so Simply what we are proposing is to implement an agent that is aware about the user knowledge and the users and the user goals. Uh, what do I mean by user knowledge? A user knowledge could be a text, a document, or a website, or any unstructured textual information that the user will visit or will read. I will analyze the content and assume that the content inside it is an acquired knowledge by the user. On another side, the search goals could be the, the set of questions the user is aiming to answer by the end of the session. So uh, now that the user is aware about those cognitive aspects, I am proposing to have it an, an, an intermediary between the user and the search engine or the information retrieval system. Uh, it will handle the results returned by the system, filter them according to the user knowledge and goals, and return those that it judges relevant for the, for the user. And it's, um, it's an interactive system. So as the user will read more documents, I will extract the knowledge inside them, update my knowledge about the user, and so on. It's not moving. Does it work? Yeah. Okay, I already done that. Okay, the question might be now, how are we representing those knowledge and those goals? Well, since we are dealing with textual information, it is unstructured, we are proposing some representation as keywords, for example, uh, rapid automatic keyword extraction or some factor representation like log or vert embedding, but we are not restricted to only those, uh, those methods. They could be any other representations, but for now we will start with those. So now that the user, uh, the agent is aware about those cognitive aspects, we will discuss how will uh, those information be used to personalize the results. Well, when the search engine will return the documents, the agent will calculate the similarity between the document and the, and the knowledge from one side and the document and the goals from another side. So since I want to return some new documents to the user, so I want to return novel content, my aim is to return documents that have the least similarity with the knowledge and the most similarity with the, um, oh, there's a type of word here, with the goals, the search goals. And now comes the most challenging part of the work is, is how to evaluate this work. Like, we know how does it work, but there doesn't exist any data set that contain and represent the user knowledge, neither, neither the, user, um, the user goals. So what we proposed is that we refer to some work that already exists in the literature. It's a study cited here that uh, provided users with some search topic. There were 500 users and some information needs. And before they start the search, the search session, they asked them to uh, do, um, to fill an exam or a pre-session test. This way we quantified the user knowledge about certain topic before the search session. Then they were asked to do the search session. Uh, we were logging, the, they were logging the queries, the documents, uh, the time visited, etc. And after the session, we did the same quantification process. And at the end, 
sorry, at the end, we could measure the knowledge gained during the session, which is the difference between the score after the session and the score before the session. That was the work already existing in the literature. What we did is that since we already have for every user, the set of submitted documents, the set of submitted queries, and at the end, I have the total knowledge gain for, for, for the sum of the session. What we want to know is to know what is the knowledge gain after reading one document, so one specific content. To do so, we did some linear regression uh, to, that allowed us to know what is the gain acquired after reading one single document. Now that we have that, we could plot the cumulative knowledge gain. So as an example, for a specific user, user one, he, he submitted four queries, one document for each query. I logged the, the individual knowledge gain and I plotted here in the graph, the cumulative knowledge, knowledge gain. So uh, as a response of the first document, he had a knowledge gain of 10. The other one was five, which makes a total of 15 and et cetera. And I make of, out of this my benchmarks, this, since there is no benchmark to compare my work, work to. So now that I have my benchmark, it's time to evaluate it, my, to evaluate the framework. What we are proposing is to build the framework. The framework will analyze the content of the document to extract the knowledge, and will use the information need provided to the users as the information gain. We also build the similarity calculator and the filter to build the entire framework. And then what we did is that we took the same queries submitted by the user in the baseline and we submitted them to our framework. We handled the results, we checked what is the result of uh, which document was returned. As um, in consequence, we, we could plot the individual knowledge gain and finally compare it to the benchmark. We, repeat, we repeated this flow three times uh, just to compare which better representation of the knowledge could be uh, could have better performances. As a result, we have the benchmark. Okay, those are not the results. I am proposing the methodology to evaluate. So those are imaginary results. They look pretty good. So uh, I have a benchmark, and the benchmark, the user, so when submitting the user, the query one, read the document 15, then 25, then 39, then D2. While comparing to the framework, it proposed another set of documents. And in the graph here, I am plotting the difference between the evolution of the cumulative gain between, between the two. I would like to point out here that out of the 500 users, we did not apply the experiment on all of them because many of them had some previous knowledge about, uh, about the presented topic. What we are proposing to do is only to consider those who scored zero in the pre-session. This way we are assuming uh, or we are confirming that they don't have any knowledge about the proposal. So uh, this is how uh, I am proposing to evaluate my uh, method. I appreciate your discussion and your feedback if you have any. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I am. Very nice idea to work on this topic. Really hard to evaluate as you encountered. So I have two recommendations to look at. Mm -hmm. One is Karsten Eikop did a paper where he used eye tracking mm -hmm. to try to find out the effect of reading a document mm -hmm. on the next query that the user issues. Maybe you can use some of them. Okay. And there is at TAC, they have a task for summarization that's called update summarization. Mm -hmm. and I'm not sure if you can use that, but you could look into it. Okay. It's about how should I update uh, uh, the summary okay. based on knowledge about what the user knows. So it's yes. quite close to mm -hmm. what you are out. Yeah, it's true. Now, for now, we are assuming that the knowledge is the entire context, what uh, is the entire content, while in real life it could be a bit partial. So eye tracking could be could be a good idea. Yeah, and this update summarization sets they yes. have they have been created already. Yeah? Okay. So maybe you can mm -hmm. reuse it. Thank you. We have another question here by Mark. Thank you. Uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, I also have two more or less recommendations. Mm -hmm. uh, one is, I think, one problem that could arise from such a system is that when users, yeah, uh, when users try to refine some documents or try to get deeper knowledge in a, in a 
topic. So if your, uh, your assumption is that you want to deviate from the user's knowledge and be closer to the topic, mm -hmm. the query, so you should find the trade-off here. Okay. If I want to find a document that I searched for like two weeks ago, mm -hmm. your system may never return it. So I think that's something to consider in the future. And another recommendation is um, for evaluation, I see that it's uh, very difficult, as you it mentioned. <laughs> yes. Uh, so you might want to use uh, user simulations. So if you look at the works by Life as a Party, okay. He did so many works on simulated users, how you can simulate queries, simulate the behavior, the knowledge. So those could save your okay. life, basically. <laughs> I consider that. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. We have a question online. David, you can speak. Oh, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Um, so it sounded like one of the challenges that you were looking at was how to figure out like how much someone gained in knowledge from one particular document, right? Mm -hmm. um, one thought that I have on that might be looking at, you know, I'd like obviously we would want to like be able to test after every single document. Another way might be able to look at like how much relative time people are spending on a page actively, like moving the mouse and scrolling up and down, things like that. Um, and then if you take that relative time that people spend on pages divided by the total knowledge gain, you might get some sort of evaluation there. Okay, Laura? Um, I'm thinking there is a couple of work that uses MOOCs, you know, like online, online courses to so sort of like uh, as, as a measurement to like assess the knowledge gain of the user. Um, the only problem, I mean, and, and it's sort of like a very similar scenario that you're getting into just like more classroom specific where I think your vision is to go more general, like, uh, how much value do I add here? But I mean, the, with these MOOCs, it's at least sort of like a more rigorous analysis, like not with simulated users, but like with real users. The downside is you need to be a partner with someone who has access to a MOOC to actually get that kind of experiments going. But maybe there's a means for like, um, uh, like a collaboration. And I think there's in general, there's like, a, a, like an area it's called search as learning. There might be, that's probably where I would, where I would look and, and, and ask around. Um, the main problem that I see is that users are very messy. And even if you show them a new document that contains new knowledge, uh, and now you test their knowledge gain, they might still not get it. <laughs> you know, it's like, so the, the, the measurement is like, might, might be potentially very noisy just because humans are very noisy. But yeah, it's a, it, it, it's a good idea. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm very interested in that general direction minus the user study. So if you figure something out, please do let me know. <laughs> yeah, sure. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Laura, I think. That's it. So thank you, Zima. Thank you.